What is up, Navigation Traders? Today's Friday, April 27th. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Let's jump into the alerts for the week. So going back to Monday, starting on the 23rd, our first trade was a rolling adjusting trade in ZN, so the notes. So basically what we did was we just rolled down our calls from 122 half to 120. Stayed in the same June cycle because there's plenty of time to expiration. And, and so remember when you're trading options on futures, the broker doesn't have the functionality to roll in just one transaction like he can with equities. So essentially we closed out the 122 calls and we re-sold uh, the 120 calls. So you can see those 122 half calls were basically worthless. And then we added some more credit there. So continue to manage that trade. If we take a look at the chart, just to give you an idea, we actually have two positions. So we had a later an alert later this week adding another strangle, but let's just start with this one that we that we rolled down. So our calls were at the 122 half. Price came down, breached this break even, so we rolled those down to the 120. So now we have essentially a straddle. Now we've got days left, we've got 28 days. So, you know, when we get down to about 21 days to expiration, uh, we, if, you know, if this profit line has crept all the way up and price has stayed in this range, then we may just close this piece out uh, or we may look to roll. We'll see, we'll see what it looks like at that point. Then the other alert that uh, was a little bit later in the week, we added this strangle here. So we've got two pieces to the trade, uh, both in the same June cycle. You can see we've got a tiny bit of profit here, but looking for some more profit before we do anything there. Next trade was a closing str uh, strangle in CL in the oil. Only in this trade for 12 days, booked a profit of over 40% of max in just 12 days. So that was a nice trade. Next trade was another closing trade, and this was a pre-earnings long straddle in Starbucks. So we booked over 20% profit in just a few days on that trade. So we got a little bit of price movement in Starbucks along with them, some expansion in implied volatility. So it gave us the opportunity to book a nice quick profit there before the earnings came out. Next trade was another closing trade. So I had uh, five closing trades this week. Next one was a, an iron condor in IWM. Booked a profit over 40% of max profit on that one. So that was nice as well. Now we had an opening trade, so we bought a pre-earnings straddle in Apple. They announced on 5-1, so again, looking for about 20% or more profit on that one. If we take a look at Apple, we've got, uh, here's, the, here's the earnings play. You can see it's kind of hanging out down a tiny bit here. So if we get a big move down or, or a bigger move up, you know, hopefully we can get some profit out of this before, before May 1st. So we'll continue to watch that. And then the other piece that we have on an Apple, totally separate trade, is this long put vertical that we put on just for some additional short delta in our portfolio. Uh, we had rolled this from the last expiration cycle. So with the rolls, we're about at break even. So if we get a little bit more down move, uh, we might take this one off for a profit or continue to hold for, for that uh, short delta in our portfolio. Next trade was a uh, closing adjusting trade in FXI. So we closed out one of our short strangles in FXI, booked a nice profit on that piece of the trade, and then we're still holding another piece at that point. And so if we take a look at the piece that we're holding, uh, it's this centered strangle, nothing to do here except for wait on that one. Next trade was an opening trade. So we uh, implied volatility popped its head back up over 50. In fact, it was at 67 on the percentile when we put this on. So we added some more premium, premium in oil. I love the bang for the buck you get in oil on the futures. We take a look here at oil. You can see it's already come in nicely up about 360 bucks, but we wanna continue to wait. You can see the max profit with just one contract is uh, $1,530, so that's why I say great bang for the buck. Uh, and it only took us uh, you know, a little over $1,000 in buying power to put that on. So just, just a great vehicle. I love having it on if there's any type of implied volatility 
in oil. Next trade was an opening trade in IWM. So we put on another iron condor there with IV percentile of time at 85. So if we take a look at IWM, you can see still very centered, got a little bit of profit, just waiting for some more time to pass and theta to decay in our favor. Next trade was an opening trade in EWW. So IV percentile got up to 93 when we put that on. Uh, I did mention you could buy the wings to define your risk. It is a lower price symbol, you know, just in the in the 50s, uh, low 50s. So buying the wings, you may not get enough credit. Um, I think on this one, I did have a, a member email me and said they got a decent credit when they when they bought the wings on that. So that is an option. By the way, I did want to mention uh, if you are a Tastyworks, uh, if you trade on Tastyworks, they just released the ability to sell naked calls in an IRA. So you've always been able to sell naked puts in an IRA, but we couldn't do strangles and straddles because selling naked calls was not allowed. Well, Tastyworks continues to innovate. They were able to find a trustee that allows you to sell naked calls in an IRA. So it's kind of the same as puts, they're gonna be cash secured. So you don't get as much leverage if you were in a margin account, but now you do have the ability to sell strangles and straddles in the IRA if you're with Tastyworks. So huge deal. I'll be sending out a, a, an email with more information about that. But uh, uh, from what I understand, you just need to go to the Tastyworks website and opt in to be able to sell naked calls in your account. And then you'll be able to trade these uh, straddles and strangles, which is awesome. So really excited about that. They continue to just, uh, you know, change the industry, change the marketplace with their innovation. So really cool stuff. Next trade was uh, an opening adjusting trade in Natty Gas. So got a couple of questions on this because the implied volatility is fairly low. So if we were looking at this as a new position, we probably wouldn't have entered. But once we're in the trade and we're kind of trying to manage through it to completion, we don't mind adding and taking off positions, even if the IV is below that 50, which we like to enter new trades on and especially with with these options on futures you get such a better credit better bang for the buck so i don't mind doing that and that's what so that's what we did in natty gas and so if we take a look at nat gas here you can see we're still very centered got a little bit of profit there just waiting for some more time to pass next trade was a closing trade in nvidia so we did a a long pre-earning straddle in there, booked a profit over 28% in just seven days. They don't announce until 510. So if we take a look at the chart of NVIDIA, see where that is at this point here. So if, if, if implied volatility continues to dip down a little bit into Monday, we may look to enter another pre-earnings long straddle uh, on that one because that, that played out nicely. Got a nice little Quick move there, book that profit, and then, um, you know, so we'll continue to monitor and, and watch that one and maybe be able to get in another trade before they announce. Next trade was uh, opening adjusting trade in wheat. So add an iron condor in the July cycle. Uh, if we assume, you know, if, if wheat doesn't make a, a massive move out of our range and, we, and we're able to close this one for a profit, we will be profitable in our wheat trade overall. You know, we've been in this trade for quite some time now. And so uh, we've, we've battled all the way back. Now we've got this new iron condor on here. So just looking for a little bit of profit. If we book that, we, sh we will be in the profit overall on this trade after battling through a couple pretty big moves in wheat. And I'll go over that once we, once we get that closed. Next trade, a closing trade in Microsoft. So we had to take a little loss on this one, uh, and, and so we got out at 426. This was a pre-earnings long call. We had booked one, uh, booked a winner in this last week of like 364 bucks, to 364 dollars. Took about a 300 dollar loss on this one. So net net between the two, only netted out about a 64 dollar profit. Unfortunately, I was hoping to get a cup, book a couple of winners in there, but the market did not participate. Microsoft got drugged down by the rest of the. Uh, market when it was when it was going down. So that one did not work out for us. If we take a look at Microsoft, we got out, that was 426. 
So I just want to show you if uh, if you got out later in the day than we did, then you actually got close to a break even or or maybe a little bit of a profit. We got out fairly early in the day when it popped up a little bit. So we cut down our losses from where it was, but then it continued to rally. So if anybody got out up here, you could have got out for about a scratch or, or, a, or a smaller loss than we did. So hopefully you guys got some better fills on that trade than we did. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in uh, Nat Gas. So we had an, uh, a different iron condor on there, booked a profit over 35% on that piece. And then we still have the other iron condor on that I just showed you. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in wheat. So we closed out that one, booked a nice profit, 40% of max on that piece. And then we just still have that, that other one, that other uh, one iron condor left to manage. Then we had an opening trade in Amazon. This was a, this was a stinger. So it's such a high probability trade that if the stock after earnings opens up above the expected move, like we saw here. So it opened up way up here. A lot of times what it'll do is just kind of grind sideways to higher. And that's what we were looking to happen. Unfortunately, it opened up and never went up at all. It just came straight down. So we, we put this on with just one day to expire because we got such a, such a nice credit. Unfortunately, with that move, we were going to either close for a loss or, you know, sometimes these do take a couple days. So I'm going to, what I did is I extended duration on this trade and we simply rolled out to May, which has 21 days to expire. So trying to make back some of that loss that we took today on the trade. Uh, we're not going to get it all back, but I did this for a couple of reasons. One, to extend duration because I still think there's time to, to get that grind or that move higher that we anticipated and unfortunately just didn't happen today. So giving it a little bit more time to make up some of that loss that we that we took today. And then the other piece of this that, that you wanna take into account, and this is one of those nuances that only comes from trading for a while and managing your portfolio through multiple cycles. And that is, we were starting to get a little bit overweighted on our short delta. And I'll go over where we're at on our portfolio but what this did is it added back in or kept in some long delta in our portfolio to help balance that out. Remember, we like to measure the amount of short delta we have in our portfolio in relation to the amount of theta that we have. And we were getting up into that three, three and a half times short delta to our theta. And so keeping this on played a couple different roles. One, as its own individual trade, we wanted to keep it on, extend duration, pair back some of the loss that we took today. And then second, keeps a little bit of long delta to help balance out our overall portfolio delta. So that is a, that's a key component that, again, you know, if, if I didn't need this long delta, it would have swayed my decision a little bit more to just closing the trade and taking a loss. But the fact that it helped balance our portfolio by adding in some of that long delta, that was one of the factors that I looked at in extending duration on this trade. So hopefully that makes sense. And when I go to the, uh, the monitor tab to show you our overall uh, portfolio and the Delta, I'll, uh, I'll tie that up to make sure it makes a little bit more sense to you. Next trade was an opening trade in Facebook. So Facebook had announced earnings uh, yesterday. And so we put this on as a post earnings short strangle, implied volatility percentile still nice and high at 67. So put this trade on as another premium selling position. And you can see it's already come in a decent amount, up, about, up 50 bucks in just a day. So we'll continue to uh, hold that one and look for some more theta to decay in Facebook. You can see it, it was 67 when we put it on, so right at about here and it dropped all the way down to 56. So got some nice theta decay just in that in, the, in that one day. And lastly was the rolling adjusting trade in Amazon. So the one I already showed you. So now we hold the, I didn't specify that, but we hold the, uh, we're gonna short the uh, 1580, 15, and then long the 1560 for the, uh, for, the, for the short put spread there. So looking for a little bit of up move in Amazon. Let's look at some of the other positions that we have on. I went over oil in the ES. We've got a couple positions on here, one of which is an iron condor. You can see nice and centered. We've got some profit there, not enough to take off yet. 
And then the other separate trade is a long put vertical that we have on for short delta. You can see price is slightly out of our range, so just need a little bit of down movement in the market to benefit that piece. I went over Nat Gas, went over the notes, soybeans, got an iron condor on here. Still, excuse me, still very centered. Just waiting for some more time to pass there. Went over wheat, went over Apple, Amazon, DIA. Got a couple different positions on here. So we've got an iron condor, which you can see we got a little bit of profit, just waiting for some more time to pass there. And then we've got two of these short call verticals. And I had a question on this from one of our members today of why we, why we have rolled these. Uh, Cause this was originally part of an iron condor but price came through, tested this side, so we took off the untested side like we teach in the course, and then what we did is we rolled the tested side from one expiration to the next, and we've done that a couple different cycles. And, and again, the reason we are doing this is to keep that short delta in our portfolio. So we could have just uh, taken the trade off at that point and, and moved on, but the fact that it played a role in keeping short delta in our portfolio that's why we're that's why we're keeping these on, and and so we did that both in DIA and then I'm going to jump down to the Qs because we've got the same thing on. We've got two different sets of short call verticals, just one strike different to keep in line for for tracking purposes, uh, but very similar trades. So just keeping that on because we'll benefit with with some downside in the market. Remember when we're selling premium, or when we're selling these strangles and iron condors and these range bound type trades. The way that we protect ourselves is keeping some short delta, some short bias overall uh, from those, you know, high velocity down moves, uh, which we can see, which obviously we've seen the last couple months. So just continue to manage those. Uh, let's see, going back up here, EEM. We've got a strangle on an EEM. Got some profit there. Wait for some more before we take that off. EWW, I think I already mentioned that one. We've got a, a strangle, still very centered. Waiting for some more time to pass there. Facebook, FXI, GLD. We've got an iron condor in here. And this is in May, which has uh, 21 days to expiration. So if we can get a just a slight move up book a, and book 40% of max profit on that one, that'll be nice. It's kind of It's kind of been hanging out at the downside of its range uh, for, for a couple weeks now. So we just need a little bit of a pop higher. Obviously, if it moves down through our break even, we will adjust as necessary, uh, but continue to, to keep that one on and monitor that. Uh, IWMQ's Tesla. So Tesla's another uh, short bias position. We've got a long put vertical here. So just looking for some more downside movement in Tesla to benefit us there. And then XLK, which is the healthcare ETF, excuse me, the technology ETF, uh, just uh, another short, short premium, uh, excuse me, short bias trade, just looking for some down movement to benefit that piece. So now let's go to the, let's go to the monitor tab and look at our overall portfolio to give you an idea. I've been talking about keeping this short delta in our portfolio. Remember, we like to beta weight this to SPY. Okay. And that helps uh, you know, make all the different symbols into kind of apples to apples, theoretically. So what you'll see here is we've got in May, I, I, I separate these by the, the expiration cycle. So in May, we've got basically negative 200 delta. In June, we've got negative 50 delta. July is pretty flat. And then with that Apple earnings play, we've got a little bit more short delta. So we've got about 250 uh, 265 short delta. So we look at that in relation to our theta. So um, in theta, we've got $21 in May, 79 in June, and then 50 in July. So that's about 150. So we like to have more short delta typically uh, than we do theta. And, and going back to that Amazon trade, you can see the Amazon position kept uh, about $78 of long delta. So if we, if we just closed that out, we'd have an extra $78 of short delta, which is getting us up there uh, you know, a little bit more short than I wanna be right now. And so that's, that's when I mentioned you know, rolling that extending time, extending duration, keeping a little bit of long delta to help balance our overall portfolio. That's one of the reasons why we did that. It, not to mention 
just looking at the Amazon trade uh, uh, in itself. Uh, we, we, we manage each trade individually, but we also want to know how that impacts our overall delta to theta ratio. And just to review, we like to keep, you know, if our theta is $100, we like to have at least 100 negative delta, okay? Or up to a max of five times the amount of short delta. Where we're at right now, I, you know, I don't feel like we're at really any extreme to the upside or downside in the overall market in the, you know, SPY. So having about a one-to-one, two-to-one, three-to-one ratio is, is right where we want to be. So I like where we're at position-wise from a portfolio standpoint. We've got a good diversified portfolio uh, with oil, S&Ps, nat gas, 10-year notes, soybeans, wheat. We've got Apple, Amazon. So we've got some individual stocks in there, Tesla. And then we've got you know the Dow, emerging markets, Mexico, Facebook, uh, FXI, which is China, gold, small cap, technology, uh, another stock, Tesla, and then XLK. So I, I like our mix. You know, that, that Amazon trade did sting today. You know, it, it was such a short term, you know, the, with the one day options that that, that little move down uh, was, was a little bit of a stinger. But, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get a little bit of a rebound, make some of those profits back. And we've, and we've had, we've just been killing it the last few weeks as, pro, as far as profit goes. So we are in good shape. I like where we stand. Obviously, we can't win them all. Wish we could, but uh, not not the way the game works. So hopefully that's helpful. Everybody have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week.